Okay, 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 okay. Plague Burst Crawler Plague Burst Crawlers are a Nurgle Heavy Demon Engine used by the Death Guard. The designs for the first Plate Burst Crawlers were created by Mortarion as an act of stubbornness. The Death Lord sought to create a mobile artillery that could outclass any comparable Imperial weapon, and thus demonstrate the Death Guard's superiority over their older kin. For months he locked himself away in the toxic smog-filled towers of the Black Mance on the Plate Planet, obsessing over his foul brainchild pouring all his superior intellect into the challenge. The resulting demon engines reflect the values of their creators well. Plague Burst Crawlers are formidable tanks with massive blades, thick armor, and demonic energies that grant them incredible resilience. Their fearsome Plague Burst mortars have a parabolic arc and a terrifying range. While the shells they fire combine explosives with clouds of deadly corrosive spores to deal damage comparable to the Imperial Demolisher cannons. Huh? 
The drawback to this weapon is its inability to engage targets closer than its minimum range. However, the rest of the crawler's armament is intended to slaughter enemies who come close, spraying slime and microscopic bullets at anyone who approaches. It takes great effort to bind a demon within each plate burst crawler. Once installed, the possessing entities tirelessly obey their master and, by extension, the will of Mortar Ion. Plate burst crawlers are not fast vehicles, even at full power. However, their progress is as honed and relentless as the Death Guard themselves. Intended to support infantry assaults, plate burst crawlers plow forward like giant slugs. Their mortars firing at regular intervals. An area subjected to constant bombardment from these weapons becomes saturated with spore clouds. Demonic spores that can corrode the thickest adamantium plating. These hideous effects have made the plate burst crawlers a weapon of war much loathed by many. Plate Burst Crawler Plate Burst Crawlers are a Nurgle heavy demon engine used by the Death Guard. The designs for the first Plate Burst Crawlers were created by Mortar Ion as an act of stubbornness. The Death Lord sought to create a mobile artillery that could outclass any comparable Imperial weapon, and thus demonstrate the Death Guard's superiority over their older kin. For months, he locked himself away in the toxic smog-filled towers of the Black Mance on the Plague Planet, obsessing over his foul brainchild, pouring all his superior intellect into the challenge. The resulting demon engines reflect the values of their creators well. Plague Burst Crawlers are formidable tanks with massive blades, thick armor, and demonic energies that grant them incredible resilience. Their fearsome plate burst mortars have a parabolic arc and a terrifying range. While the shells they fire combine explosives with clouds of deadly corrosive spores to deal damage comparable to the Imperial Demolisher cannons. The drawback to this weapon is its inability to engage targets closer than its minimum range. However, the rest of the crawler's armament is intended to slaughter enemies who come close, spraying slime and microscopic bullets at anyone who approaches. It takes great effort to bind a demon within each plate burst crawler. Once installed, the possessing entities tirelessly obey their master and, by extension, the will of Mortar Ion. Plate burst crawlers are not fast vehicles even at full power. However, their progress is as honed and relentless as the Death Guard themselves, intended to support infantry assaults. Primarch, Covis Corux. Corux was separated from the Emperor when he was still a child by the four Chaos Gods. He was found on Lycaeus, a desolate moon of the planet Kiavar. At that time, the planet was a giant factory with advanced industry and abundant resources mined from Lycaeus by slaves. Under the strict control of the Kiavar army, the inhabitants of Lycaeus, criminals, out-of-date politicians, workers had to work hard to supply minerals to the Kiavar factory. The appearance of the white child who would later become Korok's the messenger was considered a sign of their liberation from slavery. They began to teach Korok everything a warrior and a military man needed, combat techniques, explosives, politics, philosophy. Of course, the pre-march learned very quickly and pleased them believing that Korax was their savior. Educated to be a leader and a rebel, Korax quickly set about his task by raising an army, dividing the people of Lycaeus into groups and taking the best men as leaders, crafting weapons and building stores for them, instilling confidence and courage in the warriors. When the time came, 
Korax's forces attacked the army of Lycaeus and took over the moon. When Kiavar's forces counterattacked, they were completely overwhelmed by Korax's large numbers of warriors. His ambush tactics and the destruction of food stores, even bombing Kiavar with gravity mines. After weeks of fighting, Lycaeus was victorious, and the inhabitants renamed it Deliverance. It is said that the emperor appeared on that day of victory on Deliverance, and after a day and night of conversation with his son, he appointed Korax as Primarch of the Raven Guard and promised Korax that Kiavar would be transformed into a place of peace and prosperity for the Imperium and its moon would be the home of the Legion Raven Guard. During the Great Crusade, Korax's talent for planning and raiding would greatly benefit the Imperium. The Raven Guard, under Horus' command, became an unrivaled force. However, after a bitter quarrel between Korax and Horus, the Raven Guard left the Warmaster's command. When they next met Horus on Istvan V, Korax was badly wounded but escaped with a group of loyal Space Marines. He was sent back to Deliverance to reinforce the defenses in preparation for the enemy's attack, which frustrated him greatly as he was unable to assist the Emperor as his forces were nearly all decimated. Searching the Imperium's libraries, Korax found a book about the Emperor's experiment in creating a Primarch and decided to use it to rebuild his forces as quickly as possible. Ignoring the book's warnings, when the Raven Guard resurfaced, rumors began to circulate that they had monsters fighting among the space. Marines and the Legion Space Wolves confirmed this. After the Horus Heresy ended and Robot Goelimon wrote a codex confirming the Legion's split into chapters, Korax was devastated by the split of his brothers and did not know what to do with the monsters he had created. After sitting and pondering for hours on how to resolve the issue, he decided to ask the Emperor for forgiveness for the souls of his soldiers and himself. Then, overwhelmed with guilt, he locked himself in his room to ask his father's forgiveness. No one knows if Korax received any word from the Emperor. But after a year, he suddenly left Deliverance and headed straight for the Eye of Terror, saying the last words the Imperium heard, I don't give AF asterisk asterisk K anymore. Kayvon Shrike Kayvon Shrike is a renowned member of the Raven Guard chapter, formerly the Shadow Captain of the Third Company. He currently holds the highest rank of a chapter Space Marine, Chapter Master, Shrike is known as a master of stealth and infiltration techniques. Striking from deep within the darkness. So fast and deadly that by the time his enemies have time to react, they are already consumed by Shrike's darkness. History Early life Shrike was born on the Imperial Forge World Kiavar. And as a young boy, he demonstrated his skills in stealth and infiltration. As a teenager, he worked as a runner for the Tarko Gang, a gang operating in the Hive City where Shrike lived. In the final years of his teenage years, Kayvon Shrike's fateful year finally came. He was hunted down by rival gangs to the one he belonged to. And during his week on the run, Shrike ate mostly wild mushrooms and drank from small puddles. However, the rival gang members were not the only ones on his trail. From high above, in the towers of the Hive City, the chaplains of the Raven Guard, who roamed the cities of Kiavar in search of their neophytes, were also watching Shrike's escape with increasing interest. When Shrike was cornered, he made his pursuers pay dearly, killing four of them. But he was no match for the numbers that surrounded him. 
They took Shrike back to their base, <laughs> where they tortured and abused him in order to extract as much information as possible. However, with his talent, Shrike continued to escape and killed three more before being rescued by the chaplains using jump packs from his captors. Shrike initially thought the Raven Guard chaplains were from another day. So he fought back fiercely despite being severely injured and completely exhausted. Realizing that Shrike's body was not suitable to become a space marine at this time, the chaplains decided to take him with them to the Raven Guard's fortress monastery on the moon of deliverance for treatment and training. Kayvon Shrike was not a passive person. Since being brought to the fortress monastery, he always tried to oppose his instructors and hide in the deepest parts of the fortress. But over time Shrike came to realize his duty to the great emperor and to humanity. And he gradually controlled his temper and abilities to become one of the most talented neophytes of the Raven Guard in centuries. The Hunt for Valdorius During this time, Kayvon Shrike led the third company in a brief campaign on the world of Quintus. On Quintus, the Night Lords and the Alpha Legion sparked a rebellion against the Imperium. Led by Kernax Valdorius, Demon Prince of the Alpha Legion, who commanded the Chaos Space Marines as well as other Chaos forces on Quintus. Kayvon Shrike joined forces with Corsar Khan commander of the Third Brotherhood of the White Scars chapter and master of the hunt. In order to obtain a bit of Valdorius blood, as well as bring Quintus back under the Emperor's light in a campaign that would become known as the Hunt for Valdorius. How Kayvon Shrike resolves conflict between chapter. In the warehouse of Clan Harmek chapter Iron Hand there was an ancient artifact called Brimstone Heart. One fine day, a group of Dark Eldar broke into Harmek's warehouse to steal Brimstone Heart. Iron Captain Tyrod immediately led his troops to chase and kill all the Dark Eldar but could not find Brimstone Heart except for a piece of paper with the content, Thank you, sign, Trays in the Infinite. Tyrod was therefore stripped of his rank for several months. One fine day, the Iron Hands suddenly heard that Brimstone Heart was currently on planet Zaladin II. So Tyrod immediately brought all of Clan Harmek there to get it. When they arrived, they found the whole planet was being occupied by an Orc Wack. Attack and the Brimstone Heart was being used as a battery to create an energy shield to protect the capital. So an argument broke out between the two chapters Imperial Fist and Iron Hands when one side wanted to use it to protect the capital. The other side was determined to get it back at all costs. The two sides argued so intensely that they considered using their fists to talk. At this time, the Raven Guard force of Chapter Master Kayvon Shrike had arrived on the planet to assist in destroying the Orc Wax and decided to secretly destroy the Brimstone Heart and blame the Orcs. There was no more reason to argue so all three chapters turned to smash the Orcs to relieve their anger. Go, go, go!